Ladies and gentlemen, the motion picture you are about to see is called The Naked City. My name is Mark Hellinger. I was in charge of its production. And I may as well tell you frankly that it's a bit different from most films you've ever seen. It was written by Albert Maltz and Malvin Wall, photographed by William Daniels, and directed by Jules Dassin. As you see, we're flying over an island, a city, a particular city. And this is a story of a number of people, and a story also of the city itself. It was not photographed in a studio. Quite the contrary. Barry Fitzgerald, our star, Howard Duff, Dorothy Hart, Don Taylor, Ted DeCorsia, and the other actors played out their roles on the streets, in the apartment houses, in the skyscrapers of New York itself. And along with them, a great many thousand New Yorkers played out their roles also. This is the city as it is. Hot summer pavements, the children at play, the buildings in their naked stone, the people without makeup. Well, let's begin our story this way. It's one o'clock in the morning on a hot summer night. And this is the face of New York when it's asleep. Or as nearly asleep as any city ever is. Bad hunting on Wall Street at night. No bulls, no bears, no lambs. A bank is a lonely place at this hour. And even a theater has lost its magic. A question. Do the machines in a factory ever need rest? Does a ship ever feel tired? Or is it only people who are so weary at night? There is a pulse to a city. And it never stops beating. And some people are in their bread at night. Sometimes I think this world is made up of nothing but dirty feet. It's wonderful working on a newspaper. You meet such interesting people. You put on a record, you take it off. You put on another. Does anyone listen to this program except my wife? And while some people work, others are rounding off an evening of relaxation. And still another is at the close of her life. Let's go. Don't be a fool. This has got to be sure. <laughs> Lift her up. What you gonna do? A hot night has worked its way toward dawn. Texas beef for New York markets. Uncle Harry's letter gets an early start. Everything as usual, the morning routine. And even this, too, can be called routine in a city of eight million people. I've done a lot of things. But I never killed nobody. I'm going to stay drunk a long time. I don't know what I'm going to say to God when my time comes. He's got a big heart, I'm told, but he don't like it. Thought you were off the liquor. Liquor is bad. Weakens your character. How can a man like me trust a liar like you? I can't. It's an hour later now, 6 a.m. Babies are eight o'clock babies. Some babies are seven o'clock babies. Why do you have to be a six o'clock baby? Good boy, Teddy. No matter where you roam, don't forget your country or the one you left at home. 
today. Yeah, so next week I'll get my vacation. It'll be freezing. She went to Jones's Beach last night. Had a picnic. With her boyfriend? Yeah. Did he get fresh again? Yeah. Oh, gee, she was born with a silver spoon. For this woman, the day will not be ordinary. Martha Swenson, 42 years old, a widow. Lives a quiet life as a house worker. The 10th Precinct Station is in the Chelsea District of New York. A rather shabby building on a rather shabby street. Acts of violence in Manhattan are reported to the third floor of this building. Because here, rather quietly, the homicide squad does its work. Sometimes I wonder what the human heart is made out of. My wife, rest her soul, always said she'd rather look into a man's heart than into his head. That she could tell more about him. Just came in, Captain. Morning, Lieutenant. Hi, Dave. You're free, aren't you, Dan? Haven't had a hard day's work since yesterday. Woman drowned in the bathtub. Who's to do my leg work? How about Chuck Halloran again? All right. I like the boy. How's he doing? Oh, he's making the same mistakes I made at his age. That's too bad. I thought he showed promise. <laughs> Straight ahead, Lieutenant. Okay. Who's on the job? Sergeant Schaefer, 20th Squad. Morning, Morning. Lieutenant. Hey, Schaefer. Well, what's the story? That woman's name was Jean Dexter, 26 years old, unmarried. She used to be a dress model at Grace Hewitt's on West 57th Street. Her parents live in Lakewood, New Jersey. Her name is Vittori. That's Polish. Her name used to be Mary Batori until she came to New York. The ambulance doctor said she died of drowning. That's all I have. This her? Yeah. Martha Swenson, the woman's housekeeper, she found the body. Mr. Harvey, he's the house superintendent. He called headquarters. Where's the body? In there. Didn't this woman drown in the bathtub, doctor? She was on the bed when I got here. You come to work the same time every day. Every day except Thursday. That's my day off. Who moved the body? Oh, when I came in and saw her like that in the tub, I called Mr. Harvey here. He helped me. You should have waited for the police. Both of you should have known better. I was so upset. Dan. Say, Dan. 
I found a bottle of pills under the bed. Looks like sleeping pills. Let me see them. I left them there. Well, thank you for that, Jimmy. This is moving day around here. I thought maybe you caught the fever. Uh, about the pills. Maybe the dame took an overdose. Jimmy, it's an obligation to wait for the medical examiner. He's a learned physician employed by the city to determine the cause of mysterious deaths. Let the good man earn his money. No accident, no suicide. Bruises on her throat, shoulders, and arms. Those slight burns around her mouth and nose were caused by chloroform. She was anesthetized after a struggle, then dumped into the tub alive. How do you know that, Doctor? By the white foam around her mouth. It's proof she drowned. New? New. OK, Lieutenant. OK, Doctor. Body's yours. Start working, gentlemen. Just smudges. Dan! Men's pajamas. Found them in the laundry hamper. No visible laundry marks, no label. Don't be fancy. You don't get these for $3.95. Nick, pick up these pajamas on your way out. I want them checked right down the line. What time does the elevator boy come on in the morning? Seven o'clock. Martha! Who belongs to these? Oh, I don't know, sir. I'm so unstrung. I know you are, but I think you'd like to help us. Oh, I would, I would. She was such a sweet girl. A little while, by my standards, maybe. But live and let live, I say. She always treated me fine. The pajamas, Martha. Oh, I'm all in pieces. Martha? Well, they could belong to Mr. Henderson. What's Mr. Henderson's first name? Uh, Philip, I think. He lives in Baltimore. At least that's what she told me. I only saw him once. All I know is he was an admirer of Miss Dexter's. Seems likely. Oh, I'm all in little pieces. What a nightmare. You're being a great help to us, Martha. How old would you say Mr. Henderson is? Oh, 50 about. What's he look like? Oh, like I say, I only saw him once. He was coming in just as I was going home. He's quite tall, on the thin side. Anything else? Uh, does he wear glasses? Does he? Oh, no, no. That's all I can remember. Mm-hmm. Do you know Henderson? Never saw him. Shoot a wire on this to Baltimore. Lieutenant. Here's the ring she was wearing. I'll phone you after the autopsy. Have fun. Always do. Sir. That ring, it's a black star sapphire, very rare. She said her brother sent it to her from India. Did she have any other jewelry? Oh, a lot. Valuable. She kept it in a jewel box, locked. Let's go get it. No. Please. OK, you can pick up that bottle under the bed now. Check. That one there. Nick, can we open a drawer on this table? Yeah, I've gone over it. What are you doing to the furniture? Investigating it. Oh, she had chamois bags full of bracelets and rings, diamond rings. They're gone. Can you describe the jewelry? Well, most of it, I think. Fine. Schaefer, will you? Yes. Pretty little slumber pellets. Jimmy, I want to go on questioning those two in there. You start your leg work. Take the number of that prescription, see the druggist. From him, go to the doctor. Then go to the dress shop she worked in. Right. Lieutenant, the newspaper men are here. OK, I'm coming. Getting any fingerprints, Nick? Nothing good so far. Fragmentary prints, smudges, that's all. Looks to me like a heavy case. A heavy case. An investigation for murder is now underway. To advance methodically, by trial and error, by asking a thousand questions to get one answer, by brain work and legwork. When it comes to legwork, Detective Jimmy Halloran is an expert. In the war, he walked halfway across Europe with a rifle in his hand. Up until three months ago, he was pounding a beat in the Bronx. And now he's playing button butt in a city of eight million people. No, the druggist can't remember Miss Dexter personally. He'll have to look up the prescription. Oh, yes, here it is. Doctor's name was Lawrence Stoneman, office in the Chafee building. 
The Chafee Building, Halloran, 18 blocks south, four blocks west. Nick. How you doing? Not too bad. Found these two hairs in the rug. Mm-hmm. Getting any fingerprints? Nothing good yet. Thanks. Martha. Aside from Mr. Henderson, did Miss Dexter have any other men friends? None that I know of, sir. Just this Niles man, Frank Niles. Oh, a lovely man. What are you doing? Don't mind me. Just admire your hair. Stoneman in. Do you have an appointment? I'm from the police department. It's quite important. Follow me, please. There's your city, Halloran. Take a good look. Gene Dexter is dead. And the answer must be somewhere down there. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Have a seat. Thank you. I want to ask you about a patient of yours. Gene Dexter. Dexter? He wrote a prescription for her about two weeks ago. Sleeping pills. Yes, a blonde girl. Very handsome, I remember now. Dexter. You from the local precinct, officer? Homicide. Oh, don't tell me that girl murdered someone. Someone murdered her. What? When? Last night sometime. What do you want to know? Well... Whatever you can tell me about her. She needed a good spanking. Took stimulants by day and needed sleeping pills at night. I told her to go slow, but no, life was too short for her. Can you tell me anything about the way she lived? Her friend? No, nothing. I saw her only that one visit. <laughs> I guess that's all, Doc. Thank you. The dress shop is next, Halloran. Grace Hewitt's on West 57th Street. Imagine me in that. I can't imagine. In the Waldorf Astoria, with Frankie singing. I can't imagine. Oh, you. You're so uncooperative, I could slam you. And somewhere in the back of her pretty head was the fixed notion that she couldn't be happy without being rich. I don't think Jean ever would have married unless the man had money. Real money. Why did you fire her? Gentlemen sometimes come here with their wives. When Jean Dexter modeled, many of them left my shop a little too interested in her. Their wives didn't like it, and neither did I. I see. Mm, can I talk to her friend now, the model you spoke about? Ruth Morrison? Yes, I'll call her. It's getting late. We better go. So what if we're late? The boss will holler. Let him holler. Strengthen his lungs. Miss Morrison, I understand you modeled with Jean Dexter. Do you know anybody who has cause to dislike her? No. How about Mrs. Henderson? Who's she? Well, Mr. Henderson and Miss Dexter are quite friendly, aren't they? She never told me of a man named Henderson. Are you sure? Really, Mr. Halloran, Jean's my friend. I don't think I want to answer any more questions unless you tell me why you're asking them. She was found dead this morning. In front of a police station, too. No report yet on fingerprints, and uh, Constantino's on his way to Lakewood to see the girl's parents. Um, got Frank Niles, Lieutenant. Have a minute. Thank you for coming down, Mr. Niles. I'm Lieutenant Muldoon. Bring Mr. Niles a chair. This is Sergeant Miller. How do you do? I've uh, never been on a police station before. Why'd you want to see me, Lieutenant? Well, just a routine check on something. Did you ever run across a girl named, uh, Dexter? Jean Dexter? Why, yes, we're good friends. And how long have you known her? A little over a year. She's a model. She helps me out on my business occasionally. And what business is that? 
merchandising consultant. I uh, help out-of-town buyers get woolens, dress goods, anything in the textile line. And you pay Mrs. Dexter a salary? No, just a bonus from time to time when she does something. Like what? Uh, modeling, entertaining somebody for me. When did you see her last? Yesterday. We had lunch together. Why? And you haven't seen her since? No. Is there anything the matter? He's dead. Murdered. Hi, Pirelli. Hi, you. Just sit here a moment, please. Dan here. Who's that talking to guy? Lieutenant Muldoon. Dan? Jimmy. Got a girl here. Ruth Morrison. Friend of Dexter's. Models of Grace Hewitt's. Hold it. I'll call her. This is terrible. I feel sick over it. My hands haven't trembled like this since I was in the South Pacific. Oh, what happened to you there? Oh, my first time in combat. What outfit were you in? 77. Say, I think I had a cousin in that one. It's in the New York Division, isn't it? Yes. Corporal James Dennis. No, I don't remember him. I was a captain. Thank you, Dave. We won't need you anymore. Excuse me. We want to find the person who murdered Jean Dexter, Mr. Nash. Anything I can tell you. You know anybody who might have had a reason to kill her? Everybody liked Jean. Do you happen to know a friend of Miss Dexter's called? Ruth Morrison. Ruth Morrison. No. Yes. She's a model, isn't she? Yeah, I think so. How, how well do you know her? Oh, I, I met her at parties once or twice that Jean gave. And how long did you know Miss Dexter? About a year. See her often? Well, yes, I, uh... Frank, why are you here? Why, uh, hello, Ruth. You don't think he could have been involved in Jean's death? He hardly knew her. How do you know? Well, of course I know. Frank and I are engaged. Congratulations. The items that make up this murder are being compiled now. They'll be listed in a folder marked Dexter Gene, along with some questions. Is Henderson the murderer? Did a taxi cab take him to the Pennsylvania Railroad Station? Who is Henderson? Where does he live? Who knows him? Bulletin, police chief, Baltimore, Maryland. Please ascertain information about resident your city. Name, Philip Henderson. Age, about 50. Thin, tall build. Confidential, quick reply, urgent. Correspondence Bureau, Police Department, New York City. Along with Henderson, one Frank Niles is now in the case. Every murder turns on a bright, hot light. And a lot of people, innocent or not, have to walk out of the shadows to stand investigation. I might be wanting to see you again. Anytime you say, Jean was my friend. And you won't leave town without letting me know. Oh, all right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Lovely young girl, isn't she? Yeah. Lovely long legs. <laughs> yeah. Keep looking at him. Pleasure. Yeah. Uh-huh. Thanks. A couple of things. One medical examiner called in. Dexter died between 1 and 2 a.m. I see. And uh, here are a few interesting items on our friend inside. Nice. These things happen, Lieutenant. I told you I didn't know Ruth Morrison very well. Now you know that Ruth and I are engaged. Can't blame a man for wanting to keep his fiance out of a murder case, can you? I never had a fiancé in a murder case. Just between ourselves, you never told your fiancé what good friends you and Miss Dexter were, did you? Uh, Ruth's a bit jealous, Lieutenant. You understand. Now, I wonder if there's anything else you told us about yourself that wasn't strictly true. I have no reason to lie to you, Lieutenant. I have a report in front of me that says you never were in the South Pacific, Mr. Niles. 
You weren't in the 77th Division. You weren't an officer. You weren't even in the Army. All right, I'm a heel. I tried to enlist, they wouldn't take me. I got a trick knee from college football, I just couldn't get in. That's all right with me, but why lie about it? I don't know. It's foolish pride, I guess. How did you spend the war years, Mr. Niles? I was in Chicago, same business I have now. Been at it long? Six or seven years, since college. Doing pretty well, huh? Very good these days. Early back. Send him in. Well, what can you tell us about Mr. Niles' business? He ain't got a business. It's a dodge. No credit rating. Dropped from his university club for non-payment of dues. Still owes a food and liquor bill of $110.83. All right, thank you. Well, Mr. Nice, I've been 38 years on the force. I've been a cop on the beach. I've been with the safe and loft squad. I've been for 22 years with the homicide squad. But in a lifetime of interrogation and investigating, you are probably the biggest and most willing liar I ever met. All right, I'm a liar. I'm a circus character altogether, but I didn't kill Gene Dexter. I told you where I was last night. Why don't you check on that? We're doing that right now. Okay, that's fine. I'm sorry. I'm not angry at you, Lieutenant. You're just doing your job. Truth is, I'm ashamed of myself. My parents had money and position. But since I got out of college, I haven't been much of a success. I'm trying to keep up a front. But I'm only a small time liar, Lieutenant. On important things, I'm straight as a die. Ask me anything you want. Gene was my friend. I want to help you. You spent nearly $50 last night at the Trinidad Club. Where'd you get the money? I play a sharp game of bridge with Park Avenue friends. I take a flyer on the stock market on inside tips. When I'm hard up, I borrow money. That's the truth. Thank you. Now, about this man Henderson, you say you met him only once in Miss Dexter's apartment. Would you describe him to me? Well, uh, medium height, husky, wore glasses, looked to be about 35. Mm -hmm. Ten Muldoon. Yeah, yeah. Oh. All right. Well, Mr. Niles, after telling me a lot of stories about a lot of things, you apparently told me an accurate story of where you were last night. Four witnesses have placed you in the Trinidad Club at the time Jane Dexter died. I guess you're in the clear, Mr. Niles. I told you, I don't lie about important things. Any more questions? I guess not. I'm not as much of a heel as I sound, Lieutenant. I'm trying to catch on to a job in industry. Maybe someday I will. I wish you luck. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. Put two men on him in three shifts. And listen, not a word about him to the newspaper men. Niles isn't even in this case. Spent $50 last night, he said. On 50 bucks a week, I supported a wife and raised two kids. <laughs> sure. But you were brought up on the wrong side of the tracks. 50 bucks. It's been a long day, Niles, but now you can go wherever you like. Except that two men will follow you day and night. Two men in three shifts. That makes six all together. Or is it seven? The only good fingerprints we got were of the maid and Jean Dexter. Several men from the 20th squad are still working on the case. 
The Baltimore police say they can't locate anyone so far who answers Henderson's description. And the pajamas in Dexter's apartment show nothing under the x-ray. They're an English import and never been washed. All stores that carry the line are being checked. That's it, Captain. Very little to go on. This man, Niles, how's his alibi for last night? He seems in the clear. So does everyone else we connected with so far. So? That means Mr. Henderson is our only suspect. Well, what about this man? Think so, Dan? Mm -hmm. Who's he? McGillicuddy is Dan's name for any unknown party in the case. You mean two men did the murder? Maybe there were five. All I know is there was more than one. How do you know that? Excuse me. Now look, this is a bed. For the moment, I'm an attractive little lady. How would you force the anesthetic on me, Mr. Henderson? Well, I'd uh, take the anesthetic. Uh, I guess the best way would be to stand behind. Like this. Correct. That's the way one man would do it. But we just got these photographs. They show finger marks on both arms. That means a man stood behind her and held her arms with both hands, while Henderson or someone else applied the anesthetic. A strong man with thick, strong fingers. And that man was my old, old friend, Joseph E. McGillicuddy. You're right, Dan. Now we have to find two men. You'll have to find them. I'm busy with a half a dozen other cases. Gentlemen, sit down. Need me any more? Yeah. Goodbye, Paddy. No matter where you're on, don't forget your country or the ones you left at home. A heavy case. Write a letter now and then and send me all you can. Say, Dan, there's an old dame outside, says she can crack the Dexter case. Have a read. Are you the officer in charge of the bathtub murder? Yes, ma'am. Ah, this one? Yes, ma'am. I can help you solve it. Yeah? Yes. My granddaddy is sheriff of Tuckahoe County, Mississippi. Your granddaddy? Yes. I'm only in my 20s, you know. And very handsome you are, too. Yes, I know. So many men are crazy about me. I, I just don't know what to do. Bye now. Bye. Oh, yes. About the murder. Almost forgot. We'll have to have the front tooth of a hound dog. Yes, ma'am. Bury it 50 feet from the grave. Then, on the third night, after the first full moon, the murderer will confess. Thank you, ma'am. Prices are awfully high these days, aren't they? Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yes, ma'am. Yes. You're sweet. Bye now. How much of that have you had in 38 years? I couldn't count it. Every time there's a headline case, we'd be lucky if there isn't a lot more. You're sweet. Bye now. Bye. The day's work is over now. People are on their way home. They're tired, they're hot, they're hungry. But they're on their way home. In the newspapers, there's a new murder story. It's hit the headlines. Full layout of pictures on page three. It's really quite sensational. It helps while away the time. When you live out in Jackson Heights, must have had a hard day, brother. Don't bite your nails, honey. Very few stenographers are murdered. Read about that bathtub murder? I'll say, some figure that dame had. Too busy to be hot. 
new case. Subway was a first, though. Wow. You too warm to say hello? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got your nice cool in your jelly tongue. I'm swell, I'm starved. Stop holding on to me, will you? Huh? <laughs> Let me go. Let me go. <laughs> Miss Billy. I put him to bed. So early? Listen, dear, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you've got a nasty job to do before dinner. What's the matter? Billy has to have a whipping. Why? He walked right out of the yard, crossed Northern Boulevard all by himself, and went to the park. Well, well I'll, I'll give him a real talking to. Oh, no, you won't. You'll give him a real whipping with a strap. Oh, now, just a minute. No, I know you don't believe in whipping a child. Well, neither did I until now. I know. But you want Billy run over by a truck? Look, I've reasoned with him. I've pleaded with him. I've threatened him. But the minute my back is turned, he's off. Well, he's a, he's a spunky kid, Jim. I don't want him to be a dead kid. No. Go on, then. Get it over with. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I've got it. Right after dinner. Jimmy? Come on, Adam, honey. I just can't go up there and take a strap to that boy. I... I have to work up to it a little bit. I think I was asking you to kill him. Well, if you think it's so easy, you whip him. Me? That's not a woman's job. Well, why does it have to be a man's job? It's always a man's job. Who says so? Hello. Oh, uh, yes, Dan. Yes. Right, right away. Sure. That does it. I have to meet Muldoon right away. Why? Dinner? Save it for me. I'll grab a hamburger meanwhile. Oh, I wish you were a, an ice cream salesman or something. I don't like this night work. I don't like it every time you strap on that gun. <sighs> I were an ice cream salesman, I'd get fat. And you wouldn't like me. And I don't like you now. Oh, yes, you do. Well, remember, you've got a job to do before you leave this house. What? Billy. Oh, I can't stop for that now, honey. Helen, you're a coward. Lieutenant Muldoon, Mr. and Mrs. Vittori, the girl's parents. I told her. I knew she'd turn out no good. All these young girls. So crazy to be with the bright lights. No bright lights for her now, is there? She's at rest now, Mrs. Vittori. No, her kind of dead don't rest. What about us? The scandal. My husband's a gardener. He works for a banker, a highly respectable gentleman. You'll get fired now. I hate her. I hate her. Oh, all right. Never mind, I hate her. I say it out straight. So fancy she was. She even had to change her name. <laughs> We'd better go in now. Would you please follow the nurse? I do hate her. I do. I warned her. A million times I warned her. I hate her. I hate her for what she's done to us. Please tell me if she's your daughter.
I feel better now. The ride was good for me. Are you sure you want to go home tonight? We can get your room at hotel. We'll go home. We don't like this place. This fine city. You don't know who did it, huh? Not yet. Did you ever see this ring? Your daughter told someone it came from a brother in India. We only had her. No other kids, no boy. I see. And did your daughter ever mention a man called Henderson? We don't know any Henderson. We haven't seen Mary even for six months. She was too busy to come see us. Who knows what she ran around with? She's dead, Mama. Don't. A good girl, I swear it. It's my fault, maybe. I didn't do better for her. When she was 15, she was working already. The five and ten cent store. Oh, it was hard. Depression time. Hard. So what? She's the only one didn't have it easy. Other people had it worse. Was that a reason to leave home? To, to change your name? Wanting too much. That's why she went wrong. Bright lights and theaters and furs and nightclubs. That's why she's dead now. Dear God. Why wasn't she born ugly? <laughs> this is the Tory. Oh, what a heartache. You nurse a child, you raise it, pet it, you love it, and it ends like this. <laughs> another day, another ball of fire rising in the summer sky. The city is quiet now, but it will soon be pounding with activity. This time yesterday, Jean Dexter was just another pretty girl. But now she's the marmalade on 10,000 pieces of toast. Hey, Mac, what's doing? Why all the people here? What's doing? What's the matter? You live in Canarsie or something? This is the place where that model was killed. You don't mean it. The bathtub girl, huh? So why didn't she take showers? <laughs> There's no pattern yet to the Dexter case, just a number of loose threads. When boys go swimming in the East River, for example, why report it to the homicide squad? Look, hey! Just routine. The morgue will take care of it. Nevertheless, some things are moving forward. There'll be a report on this. Dad! This is Dexter's address book. Contact every name listed in it. Keep asking if they heard her talk about Henderson. Okay. Then I start in on this ring of Dexter's. Canvas every expensive jewelry shop in the city. Maybe Henderson bought it from. Oh, my poor feet. Your poor feet? Be glad you're not a horseback cub. Well, what's with you? Now sold this about an hour ago to a jeweler on Madison Avenue. Got six hundred dollars for it. Well, Dave, where's that list of stuff that was stolen from Dexter? No, it couldn't be. No, not here. It's a man's age, anyway. An interesting man, that Niles. He operates very strange. Say. How about I check this cigarette case with the department list of all jewelry stolen in the last year or so? All right, I don't think you'll get anything, though. He'd be crazy to unload a stolen item in the middle of a hot case like this. Maybe he is crazy. Not that one. Hiya, Halloran. Here's a question for you. How many jewelry shops in the city of New York? Be patient, you're about to find out. Hi, officer. Just keep checking. Henderson didn't weave those pajamas himself. Hello, Constantino. A detective finds himself in odd places, doesn't he? How about a mud pack? No. Well, how about a permanent? Or uh, how about those eyebrows? Ever have them plucked? Ask a question, get an answer, ask another. If Jean Dexter isn't remembered here, Check it off. You've got our address book, Constantino. Get going. How are your feet holding out, Helen? How are you doing with that ring? 
Would you be interested to learn that there was a confession in the Dexter case only 10 minutes ago? <laughs> Lieutenant Muldoon, what's your hurry? There's been a confession. The case is all washed up, isn't it? He's in there, Lieutenant. I caught him trying to get in the kitchen by the back door. He's a grocery boy in the neighborhood. Yes, I did it. I killed her. I want to be punished. I'm guilty. My hands are stained with the blood. Why did you kill her? She deserved it. For months I've been watching her. I'd come in here with packages and there she'd be in her negligee. Beautiful. But no soul. Immoral. So I did it. I rid the world of her. The knife you stabbed her with, where is it? You'll never find it. Never. I buried it. I buried it. Call Bellevue Hospital Psychiatric Department. It's 7.30 in the evening now. It's been a great day on the Dexter case. Developments? None. New clues? None. Progress? None. Ever try to catch a murderer? It has its depressing moments. I can't see you've missed anything. Boss, I can always trust you to comfort a man. Any word today from Baltimore? No. And Henderson's pajamas were bought last week in a shop on 34th Street. Huh? But not by Henderson, by Dean Dexter. A heavy case. It is. That Niles fella is crazy. The cigarette case Niles sold this morning, it's hot. It was stolen from Dr. Lawrence Stoneman. Dexter's position? Yeah, he reported a burglary in his apartment in March. $2,800 worth of stuff. None of it has ever shown up. Here it is on a department list of stolen jewelry for the past year. And that's not all. Niles bought a plane ticket for Mexico City. One way. Leaving when? Tomorrow noon. Want me to pick him up? No. What else did he do today? Had lunch with Ruth Morrison. They held hands for an hour. She went back to a shop. He went to the Park Central and had a swim. He's at Toot Shores now. Buying a plane ticket? Pawn in a stolen cigarette case. That's not smart. What is this man, an amateur or something? That's it. That's what's in his heart. No, I know. He's had no experience of being a crook. He's a scared college boy of way out in deep water. He's beginning to thrash around now. He's in a panic. Panic over what? I don't know yet, Sam. I don't know yet. And how does this man Stolman figure? Why should Niles' pawn cigarette case belong to him? Dan? Dan. Captain, I got something. Maybe. About what? The Black Star Sapphire that Dexter was wearing when she was killed. It didn't belong to her. Huh? She didn't buy it. Henderson didn't buy it for her. It belongs to uh, Mrs. Hilton, 478 Park Avenue. I found a jeweler who repaired it for her. Scott, in the murder case, and rubbed her neck in stolen jewelry. Mrs. Edgar Hilton, there it is. Black Star Sapphire, part of a $6,200 robbery of her apartment. Did you see this, Mrs. Hilton? I thought you might want to see it. Well, now, that was considered to be a Jimmy. We'll telephone the lady and we'll both go and see her. Have a beer on me, Sam, and throw a pinch of salt over your shoulder. This case is beginning to move. Lieutenant Muldoon, Police Department. Mrs. Hilton is expecting you. Come in, won't you? What a nice-looking young man. You're the lieutenant who telephoned me, aren't you? Did you get my jewels back? This one of them? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, wonderful. Oh, you wonderful men. Where's the rest? That's all we have. I'm so disappointed. Oh, but this is wonderful. I gave it to my daughter when she graduated from college. She was heartbroken with, oh, isn't it foolish? I love to do it. It's a fixation. Mark, but you're nice looking. Oh, sit down, gentlemen. Get comfortable. Your man's funny. Mrs. Hilton, is your daughter here? I'd like to speak to her. She's due any minute for dinner. It's her night with Mama. <laughs> One of those career girls. Has her own apartment. Works. 
That's what you get when you send them to Vassa. Mrs. Hilton, if she doesn't live with you, how is it her ring was stolen from here? That was last December. She was living with me then. I see. And now I wonder if by any chance... Mother, I'm here. Hello, Mother. Miles, he's the connection. Easy, lad, easy. Mother. You told me your name was Ruth Morrison, not Hilton. Well, Ruth's my daughter by her first marriage. She kept her father's name. How do you know these men? They're investigating Jean Dexter's murder. Jean modeled with me at the shop, Mother. Imagine. Look, darling. My wrist. They brought it. Aren't they wonderful? Oh, how did you get it? Your friend was wearing it when she was murdered. Jean, how did she get it? I was hoping her daughter would tell us that. Well, I have no idea. It was stolen with the other thing. What did you mean before when you said, Niles, he's the connection? What did you mean, please? He was just wondering, miss, how your ring came to be on her finger. You don't think, Frank. Oh, but that's silly. He hardly knew Jane. Of course. Sit down. Excuse me, miss. Is that your engagement ring? Yes. Can I look at it? Pearl in an old-fashioned setting. <laughs> Unusual. Jimmy. What are you doing? I'm sorry, miss. We're checking your ring to see if it was stolen. This is fantastic. Do you honestly think that either Frank or I had anything to do with Jane's murder? I'm only earning my salary, miss. Ben. When did Niles give you this ring? About six weeks ago. On January the 8th, Mrs. Charles Franklin, 382 Fern Avenue, New Rochelle, reported the loss of this ring in a robbery. <laughs> Niles in? Went in about a half an hour ago. Alone? Yeah, apartment 6E. You can go home now. Thanks, I'm dead. So long. Good night. Whiskey's not the thing to mix with chloroform. Suppose he can go into the kitchen and see if there's a spot of coffee on the stove. It'll do fine even if it's cold. Come on, Miss Sleeping Beauty. Wake up! That's the sweet lad.
I found some cold tea. That'll do fine. He's waking up now. Oh, Frank, darling. You all right? I'm all right. Oh, sweetheart, I was so worried. Oh, my darling, my darling. The cold tea would do more good. Got away on the elevator. Did you give it a radio? Sure. Did you look at him? No. He was a husky guy, that's all I got. What is that? Same anesthetic that was used on Dexter. I think this is our friend McGillicuddy again. Oh. Well, hello. How are you feeling? I've got a head like a beehive. Is that towel wet? Want any more tea, darling? No. Well, you're thinking up a nice story about what didn't happen. Supposing you tell us what did. I don't know. Complete blackout, huh? I was packing a bag, and I thought I heard a noise. Just as I started to turn around, I got hit. I remember falling to my knees, and that's all. Now listen, Niles, you came very close to not waking up at all. The party that killed Gene Dexter tried the same business on you. Who was it? How on earth would I know? If you're afraid, I'll guarantee you police protection. If I knew, I'd tell you. I'm not a fool. You suppose I enjoyed this? And I guess who it was? Must have been a burglar. Came in through the fire escape, I suppose. A burglar? Maybe he stole something. <laughs> There's nothing missing. I don't have any valuables. What were you looking for so hard just now? Your BVDs? <laughs> I thought... I, uh, I forgot this was in my pocket. It's uh, my one valuable. It's, it's expensive. Jimmy? doing? Why'd you come down here anyway? You want to know something, Lieutenant? You're going to have a lawsuit on your hands. You can't... Carlos C. Brough, 85 West 68th Street, reported the loss of this cigarette lighter three weeks ago. Night burglary. What kind of a deal is this? You tell us. If you think I'm a thief, you're crazy. Honey, this is the craziest thing I ever heard of. Sweetheart. This is a terrible thing to ask you right now. But my engagement ring. Where did you buy it? What? Frank, darling, please. Where did you buy it? That was from a private party. Who, Frank? I can't tell you. Please, sweetheart, you must. Where'd you get the cigarette lighter? I, uh... Where'd you get the cigarette case you sold this morning? Frank, tell them. Please tell them. Why did you buy a plane ticket for Mexico City? Why? I... What ticket? When? You're supposed to leave at noon tomorrow. Is that true? Frank, is it true? It was a business trip. We had lunch today. Why did you... Something came up this afternoon. You're lying. You bought the ticket in the morning. got the wrong man if you think I stole those things, Lieutenant. I wouldn't steal a piece of bread if I was starving. That isn't the way I was brought up. I come from a decent family. Congratulations. I got that lighter as a present. You can't send me to prison for that. Who gave it to you? Jean Dexter. Now, you prove she didn't. And the cigarette case you sold this morning? The same. And my engagement ring. Sure. Jean gave me that, too. My engagement ring. You heard me. No, no, Frank. Don't say a thing like that. That would be horrible. And I know it's a lie. You hardly knew, Jane. I'm sorry, Ruth. I don't believe you. Frank, I love you. I'll marry you now, tonight. But say you're lying about Jane. If you're a thief, I'll stand by you. I'll... Don't go to prison in a pig's eye, I will. Those things were presents. Presents. Your ring was a present. Frank! From Jane. You're lying. You're lying! <laughs> 
You're under arrest. Arrest me all you like. But try to prove something against me. Try it. Just try it. Sure, but but I think maybe I found a connection between these jewel burglaries and the Dexter murder. Yeah. Have you read the autopsy report on Peter Picala? Not yet. Well, yesterday morning, some kids swimming in the East River found the body. Medical examiner says he died of drowning, had a head injury, and was full of whiskey. His verdict is accidental death. Well, huh? but look at this: Gene Dexter died between one and two a.m. Monday morning. This guy, Vicalis, died between 3 and 6 a.m. the same morning. Well, show me that it's more than a coincidence. I can't show you, Dan, but this man had a record. He served two years in Sing Sing for stealing jewelry. Now, listen. Niles and Dexter were dealing in stolen jewelry, sure. But for society stuff. <laughs> what does Vicalis' record show? I didn't think of that. It was small time. A pawn shop burglary in Queens. See? I'm afraid the two cases are miles apart. If we drag every petty jewelry thief into this, we'll go crazy. You're not convinced, are you? I don't know, Dan. Trouble is, where are we in the Dexter case? Well, we sent photos of Niles and Dexter to every police department in the East. They'll check all jewelers. Where can that lead? Well, that's the way you run a case, lad. Step by step. Oh, I suppose so. Look, Dan, do me a favor. Let me waste some time on this Bacallus angle. Okay, Dan. Swell. Phone in once a day. Right. By the way, this is only the third day of the Dexter murder. The department never calls the case unsolved. Good deal. 20 years from now, I'll put my kid on it. The Callis Parole Officer was Charles Meade, County Courthouse in the Bronx. Charles Meade? Yep. Thanks. Tell me this, Mr. Mead. Do you think the callus could get so drunk he'd fall down on the pier, hurt himself, and topple into the river? I doubt it. He seemed like one of those steady all-day drinkers. Always with a load on, but never wobbly. Who was his arresting officer? Uh, Patrolman Albert Hicks. Long Island City Precinct. <laughs> what do you know? Right on my doorstep. Thanks. Hicks, aren't you? That's right. Detective Holler and Homicide Squad. I am. Uh, two and a half years ago, you arrested a man named Bacallus. Callus? Peter Bacallus. Pawn shop entry. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Did he do that job alone? No, there was another guy with him, a fellow he called uh, Willie. Willie? Yeah. What happened to him? He got away by the neatest trick I've ever seen. I nailed Bacallus in the back alley. And he yelled, beat it, Willie. And this other customer throws a chair through a plate glass window, dives right after it, and comes up on his feet like an acrobat. Then he's off like a streak. How was this fella built? Oh, big, like an all-American fullback. And listen, something funny about him. One of the things the owner reported missing was a harmonica. Now, there's no resale value in a thing like that, so I always figured he must have liked to play one. Maybe you're right. Much obliged. Mm -hmm. A big man who's an acrobat, huh? Jimmy, I don't know where you're going, but I'm going to start in and help you. I'm giving you foul on Constantino beginning tomorrow morning. Thanks, Dan. Good night. 
His name is Willie, maybe. He might have been a professional acrobat, maybe. He might be the man we're looking for, maybe. Oh, yes, he's a big man. Only half a million big men in New York. A uh, harmonica player? No, sir, brother. Why, a character like that, I wouldn't even let work out here. <laughs> Not that I can remember. I've been booking vaudeville acts, circus acts, nightclub acts for 30 years. Well, a lot of queer regs among them, but an acrobat that played the harmonica. <laughs> that queer, I never saw one. Hi, man. <laughs> Steve, man. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Hi, man. Now go to work a little. Hey, who runs this joint? I do. What do you want? Police. Look, any of you guys ever know a wrestler who liked to play the harmonica? Sure. Willie the harmonica player. Willie Garza. I teach him how to wrestle. You didn't teach him so good. I pulverized him in Pittsburgh five years ago. Where is he now? I wish I knew. He borrowed 38 bucks from me once. Never paid me back. Where do he used to live? I don't know. In Staten Island. But his brother. What's his brother's name? Garza. All brothers got the same name. I mean his first name. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Hi, Van. Steve Van. Know what my kid did the other day? Cross Northern Boulevard all by himself. Yeah? Shows the kid has nerve. My wife was sore for a few minutes. Big deal. We haven't got any kid, and my wife's sore all the time. Which one of you is Garza? Garza! Hey, Eddie! Come on. Your wife just told us where we could find you. We're looking for your brother, Willie. Me and my brother, Willie, ain't got nothing to do with each other. He's no good. When did you see him last? Oh, three months ago, about? He tried to sell me a diamond ring for my wife. I told him to go blow. Any idea where he lives? Well, he had a room somewhere around the Williamsburg Bridge, is all I know. Got a picture of him? No, but when he was wrestling, the newspapers printed his mug a few times. That's it. Okay. Hey, if you send him up, do me a favor, will you? Throw the keys away. This is New York's east side, and a former wrestler named Willie Garza lives somewhere around here. The homicide squad wants to talk to him, if they can find him. Nothing to it, boys. Just spot this guy out of half a million people. Lady, ever see a man looks like this? Mister, ever see a man looks like this? Lady, ever see a man looks like this? You go home, you go to bed, you get up, you start all over. Mister, ever see a man looks like this? Mister, ever see a man looks like this? Hello, Dad. Jimmy. No, no, nothing so far. Oh, sure, sure, I'll keep going, yeah. What's doing at your end? Doing fine here. Mm hmm. Hmm. I'm talking to that clean cut young American beauty again. Yeah, I think he's going to tell us something this morning. Okay, report in. I've told you everything I know. Oh, no, you haven't, Sonny. But you will. Come in, Mr. McCormick. You recognize this man? I certainly do. Stop that. Sit down. Any more of that and you'll get yourself in trouble. You're getting quite a slapping around these days, aren't you? I came all the way down from Boston to do that. That smooth-talking crook came to me with an introduction I had to honor. He gave me a song and dance. His sister was terribly ill, needed an operation. He was trying to sell her jewels. I paid him over $3,000. Now it turns out to be stolen property. You paying him to say that, Muldoon? You 
You still can't prove anything. I can. I run my business with great care. This is the letter of introduction he brought with it. Dr. Lawrence Stoneman. Dr. Stoneman treated my mother some years ago. I had to honor his letter. Will you wait outside, Mr. McCormick? How do you get a letter of introduction from a man like Stoneman? You're going to the penitentiary, Niles, but from now on, the length of your sentence depends on you. Stealing jewelry is one thing. Murder is different. You know I didn't kill her. I was at the Trinidad Club. I have witnesses. Then who did kill her? I don't know. Who's Henderson? I don't know. Listen, young fella. The picnic is over. No, you've told your last lie. You're knee-deep in stolen jewelry. You're involved in the Dexter murder. You've been trying to obstruct justice all along the line. Now, you're going to tell me what I want to know, or if it's the last thing I do in this department, I'll get you 20 years. Now, that's the truth, sonny boy, and you know I'm not bluffing. Who's Henderson? Who's Henderson? Stoneman. It's Dr. Stoneman. Got any cold, Ruthie? Like ice. Ever see this man? He's a box fighter. Wrestler. <laughs> Wrestler boxing, what do I know? Hi, sir. Please. He's a fellow uh, who likes to play the, uh, whatchamacallit. The harmonica. Yeah. Sure I know him, Willie. <laughs> Where does he live? This street someplace. What house? Down the street someplace, I don't know. Where's the phone? Mister. Oh, who are you, mister? You, you from a collection agency, maybe? Ben, this is Jimmy. Dan there? Oh. Well, now, look. When he gets back, tell him I've located guards. Yeah, yeah. On Norfolk Street, between Rivington and Houston. Right. Okay. Bye. By me, Willie is a nice fellow. A man likes kids, he's not. Any little kid asks him, will he play the, uh, what you call I don't want, I should make trouble for him. Don't worry. Mister, you don't want your roof here? Ken Muldoon, Police Department. Is Dr. Stoneman in? He's in the X-ray room. Where's his office? Straight ahead. I want to do exactly as I tell you, miss. Tell the patients for all the waiting that they have to leave. Good do as I say, miss. Do you kids know a man who lives around here, the name of Willie Garza? Plays the harmonica? I know him. Willie. Where's he live? Across the street, the corner house, I think, or the next one. Good girl. Superman. Here, sit there. And don't say anything. This is really unheard of. Yes, I know, ma'am. Now, tell Dr. Stoneman someone out here has to see him. Tell him to leave his patient and come right here. And don't tell him anything else. Uh, miss, use the, uh, this thing. I'll lose my job over this. 
Doctor, there's someone here. He has to see you. You have to come out right now. You must, Doctor, right now, you must. Lieutenant Muldoon of the Homicide Squad. Do you go under the name of Henderson? Yes. You've been a long time getting it. Almost a week. You're under arrest for the murder of Gene Dexter. No. I couldn't do anything like that. If anyone did it, it was he. Finish. Finish now. What's your relationship to Nice and Dexter? A lamb led to slaughter. An idiot robbed of self-respect. I saw her a year ago in that dress shop, and from then on I was drunk with her, lost. For six months now, I've known they've been using me. I was that tipster. Me, stolen. What do you mean? They used my social connections. My wife. My wife is a party giver. Jean would find out for me who was going to be there. It was only after months that I realized when anyone came to my house, his apartment was robbed the same night. Why didn't you go to the police? Why doesn't a drug addict stop taking drugs? She kept promising each time was the last. I believed because I was afraid to go to the police. <laughs> I was afraid of the scandal. Did you arrange the burglary of your own apartment? Yes, I even came to that. I was frightened. I had to wallow in my own filth. What proof have you that you didn't do Dexter? Proof? I was someplace else. Miss Owen, my date book. Uh, uh, yes, uh, a birthday party uh, at the Brout. Will you testify in court that Noyes and Dexter committed these burglaries? No. No, they were the fixers, the smart ones. They used me one way. They hired other men to do the actual robberies. Who? I don't know. Miss Owen. My practice. No, don't try. You will call Dr. Brenard. <laughs> Only don't let me have to see anyone. Not my wife, no friends, no lawyer. Just lock me up and hide me away. medicine doctor but I'm pretty sure that's one prescription that never cured anything thanks nice and now that you finally decided to cooperate why not go the whole way you're not stupid you're hooked and you know it so why not spill the rest who did the job for you who was it who was it? Willie Garza. He and Bacallus. They wanted more of a cut from the robberies. Garza killed Gene, and later that night, he killed Bacallus. I loved Gene. I had nothing to do with it. It was Garza. 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 Una altra volta. Come on in. Oh. Thought it was a janitor for the rent. Who are you? Don't mind me. I'm just having a little workout. My name's Hockey. I work up at Bellevue Hospital. You Willie Garza? That's me. You ever seen me wrestle? I wasn't so bad. No, I never did. Patient up at the hospital gave me your address. Asked me to see you. Yeah? 
Oh, what Callis his name is. Pete? Yeah. What's he doing in the hospital? Almost got drowned. Fell in the river when he was plastic. Some guy in a tugboat fished him out. Get outside. Ah, that Pete. Can't leave the booze alone. So what does he want from me? He says he wants to see you. You know what he wants? He wants money. Some condition I'm in, eh, brother? Don't smoke. Don't drink. So, Pete wants money again, right? <laughs> ah, that Pete. You know what you can tell him, buddy? Still, I'll snap your arm like a witch ball. Get up. Copper, right? Yeah. Just because I was a wrestler, everybody thinks I'm dumb. I'm not dumb, I'm smart. Now, how did I know you were a copper? Because nobody knows where I live, not even Pete the Callus. If you're smart, you'll come down to headquarters with me. Ah, uh, that wouldn't be smart. You know why? Because the Callus ain't in Belleville. He's in the morgue. Turn around. Turn around. Don't be a fool. I'll prove I'm a smart copper. You know how? You're scared right now, I'm gonna rub you out. But I ain't, cause I'm smart. Rub out a cop and you'll really get the chance. All I need to do is put you to sleep. Then I'm off. Try and find me. This is a great, big, beautiful city. Just try and find me. That was a rabbit punch, copper. And it's strictly illegal. Yeah, he signed it. Wait a minute, Ben. Really? Yeah. Keep noise away from the newspaper, man. Yes, sir. And listen, Ben. When Howland calls in, or Fowler or Constantino, tell them that Willie Garza may be the gimmick in this case. When did Howland call in? Was he long? Now get this. Send out an emergency. Rush every available squad car. Block off the streets around it. <laughs> Seven precincts of signal 32. The address, Rivington Street between Essex and Norfolk. Car 702, 5th precinct, 509, 7th precinct, and 110 will respond. Use caution, emergency service truck responding. Attention all cars, particular attention cars in lower Manhattan. In connection with the signal 32, block off and surround both sides of the street. Be on the lookout for two men. One, Detective James Halloran, 26 years old. Two, William Garza, one in a connection with the homicide in the 20th precinct. Proceed cautiously, Gaza may be on.
lost them, Halloran, haven't you? Well, he's a tough cookie. You better follow routine now. Report in. are on a manhunt, Gaza. You need a plan. You've got to get out of this neighborhood. Stop and look at a tie. Maybe you're being shadowed. Lady, ever see a man looks like this? You gotta get out of this neighborhood, Gaza. That's it. A crowded bus is safer for you than a taxi. Tough luck, but you can't wait for the next one. How about the subway? attention to yourself. Dan, Gus is the guy. I know, I know. Where is he? I don't know. I lost him. But he's around here someplace. It's only an accident, Gus. Pass it off. Don't lose your head. Don't lose your head. Now remember, boys, we're in a crowded neighborhood. And here's what we do. Gaza from that angle.
boys, come on down. We want no dead heroes. There's no place he can go to now. chance that he come down now. I'm telling my men not to shoot. in the morning again, and this is the city, and these are the lights that a child born to the name of Batori hungered for. Her passion has been played out now. Her name, her face, her history were worth five cents a day for six days. Tomorrow, a new case will hit the headlines, yet some will remember Jean Dexter. She won't be entirely forgotten. Not entirely. Not altogether. There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them.